Hey people, Fernando doing another video here for the channel and in this case I want to do a video reaction to this uh, Honest Brexit ad. This is from Larry and Paul channel. I'll leave the link there below. Also, if you're watching this, you're probably interested in preparedness for an economic crisis, an economic collapse, the kind of thing that a lot of people are worried about these days. For that, I can of course recommend my book, Surviving the Economic Collapse, based on my experience going through just that in Argentina, also based on everything we're seeing right now and how you should prepare for the social outcome of that. Street survival skills, also available in the links there below. Let's first watch the video and then share some thoughts. You'll benefit from an NHS run almost completely into the ground, thanks to the reallocation of funds from the EU budget to hedge fund managers, conservative cronies and disaster capitalists. Controlled immigration will lead to fruit rotting on the trees, the needless slaughter of tens of thousands of healthy pigs, and increased hospital waiting times for you and your loved ones, as all the crucial workers from overseas will have buggered off. Excess funding that would otherwise be sent to Brussels could also be directed to education, but won't be. We'll increase tensions with Northern Ireland, meaning a return to the glorious Britain of the 1970s. Your wages will not rise, but the price of everything else will and a reintroduction of roaming charges will give massive mobile phone firms a much needed economic boost. New passports will be more blue and you'll be able to admire them for longer in extended airport queues. You and your family will benefit from an economy in recession led by flourishing small businesses of which only four are left. Don't worry, you'll still be able to buy and sell goods in the EU but with the added benefits of significant customs charges hilarious amounts of paperwork and ridiculous shipping delays. Food prices will no longer be inflated by EU agricultural policies. We'll find our own British way to inflate them. And following the removal of burdensome EU regulations and red tape, we'll be able to poison our own food with pesticides and flood our historic coastlines with shit and piss. Our newfound economic freedoms mean we'll probably have to ramp up interest rates, destroying the housing dreams of young people. Politicians, both local and national, will be less accountable, dictated to by a small but inexplicably powerful group of MPs. And, thanks to an archaic parliamentary system, you'll have no power to get rid of them. Our farming, fishing and steel industries are struggling. Deprived communities are falling apart and children are being pushed into poverty. But let's say the European Union did all of that. A more prosperous and safer future awaits us outside the EU. A vote to leave is a vote for a brighter future for traitors, grifters, and bastards. Yeah, so it's intended to be like a ironic, funny video. I, I don't find it funny at all because I, I don't think it's funny when anyone suffers or goes through you know hard times. Poverty is no joke. I've seen more than enough of it in my lifetime. I'd be more than happy to never see it again. Um, and even the comments, I leave the link there below if you want to check it out from the channel. The comments are of people that, yeah, after watching this, rather than laughing, I need a strong drink or I, I want to cry instead of laughing. It's, um, it, it's, it's not good when anyone suffers, let alone when 10, 15% of people are struggling and struggling very bad. I know uh, how it is. I have family living there, so it's, I know exactly how, how things are. Um, now, at the same time, I'm absolutely respectful of the decision made. You know, this is something that has to be understood as well. If the decision was to leave and people voted that way, and we can go into fraud, we can go into even a lot more important, which is something that people often don't even realize, how easy it is to manipulate people. When you have enough power, when you're rich enough, when there's enough economic interest, so as you have the power to orchestrate a certain narrative and work carefully in the social engineering for, say, at least 10 years. This is what I saw myself. I saw it happen. It was very obvious for anyone that was watching that people were being, you know, funneled into a certain way of thinking with the expected outcome. It was not accidental. This was the, the intended result all along. Now, something that quite a few people didn't quite understand is this is the reality that you you have from that decision made it's the big boy moment in which yeah you make certain decisions you you make your bed now lay on it you make your decisions now deal with those some people are probably super happy with the way things have turned out 
personally, I think it was the best to go separate ways. I have a, a certain interest in things that are very anti-British politics and the way in which they've been influencing the rest of the European Union. It was something that I really did not like. So personally, I, I was hoping that this would be the outcome. At the same time, I knew it would involve a lot of suffering for a lot of people. But given that the decision was on them, you know... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's something that you cannot point at anywhere other than yourself, point at the mirror. It is true, though, that the, the very sad part is, is this, you know, the, the kids. These little kids had no option. They had no choice in the matter. And adults, sometimes even against their own, we against their own best interest, made a decision that now is causing them suffering. You have families right now that have to decide... Do we eat ourselves or we leave food for our kids? There's a very real level of food poverty in UK right now. There's energy poverty, there's food poverty, meaning that people make the decision of how much we eat so as to leave enough food for our kids. That is, that is terrible, and it is happening. And it could have been avoided? Yeah, no doubt whatsoever. Anyone that doesn't understand this probably struggles with 2 plus 2 equals 4. You cannot be part of the largest economic group in the planet, the financial center of that largest economic group in the planet, and all of a sudden not be part of it anymore and continue the way you were before. And it's definitely not going to be any better. I mean, it, it is incredible that people did not understand this. And I've been covering this even before 2020, even before Brexit. I said, go back and watch those videos. You will be hit by inflation, by poverty, in which, in, 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 a, in a way in which I don't think many of you fully understand. And it won't happen right away. It will happen two, three, four years from now. Now is that time. Now is those four years later that you're seeing. This isn't it's the same thing with what is happening right now in the rest of the world, especially in the United States with the level of inflation that you're seeing right now in the United States. You're not seeing the full picture right now. You won't see it six months from now. Maybe two, three, four years, five years from now, you will see the impact in the society of those economic changes that right now are just in the news and a piece of paper. But it only hits to this degree sometime later. This is that sometime later, and it's not getting better anytime soon. No matter who you change as prime minister, you cannot uncrash a car, right? You can buy a new one. You can keep driving your old crash car. You can somewhat jerry-rig it into working again, but you cannot uh, de-crash it. You cannot do that. That's impossible. The same way you cannot go back right now with the economic impact of no longer being the financial center of the largest economic group in the planet right now this is i mean and sometimes it was so easy to manipulate people into oh brussels is trying to um uh, to uh, legalize the curvature of bananas or idiotic stuff like that and people believe that oh you'll have a blue passport now who gives a damn about the color of a piece of paper oh but it represents my independence okay i guess i mean was it worth it for some people it probably was and if that's the, the case, man, more power to you. You got exactly what you wanted. I don't think that most people understood what they were voting for or getting themselves into. I think they believe this idea that, yeah, we will have more negotiation, more negotiating power. No, no, you won't. There, there's no way in which you have more power being a small nation that is no longer part of a largest economic financial group of the planet with the critical mass and the uh, political and financial weight that comes along with that when you're just one independent country. There's no way in which you negotiate on the same level with the United States, with China, with Russia, or any other country. When you don't have that critical mass anymore, you're in a much uh, uh, you know, reduced position of negotiation. This is quite simple. And, and the idea that some people could not understand that if you're New York and you have Wall Street, 
that only works as part of the United States and the United States economy and the rest of the world. And the rest of the world will only care about you being Wall Street and New York as long as you're part of the financial system of the United States. If you become an independent sovereign state of New York, like you know, like the freaking Vatican in, in, in New York, you know, Manhattan, because I got a little Vatican, and you're cut out of the financial uh, institutions and the system that keeps you uh, afloat as uh, a hub for financing not only in that um, economic group but in, in the broader picture in the rest of the world, you are nothing. You become just a tiny little island with a bunch of nice buildings and that's all New York is. In a similar manner, that's what you have. You know, it's not that you have a, a huge amount of agricultural production or the industry that Germany has or in, you know, a place where you know, tourism is one of the big parts of the, of the industry and the economy. No, it was a financial center based mostly in London. When you take that away, these are the results. And why is it that some people wanted this to happen? Well, because of what is being explained in this video. The idea of you no longer having to answer to some of the decisions that are not only unpopular, but are basically uh, illegal or against the regulations that you uh, uh, promise to abide by. So, I mean, the, the problem with Northern Ireland, that is a ticking time bomb, maybe literally the idea of, of businesses. Uh, yeah, when and a lot of people didn't understand this because maybe they lived their entire lives thinking that you could just start a small business in your house and just ship something to uh, in Italy or Germany, you know, arriving the next day and that was it. No, that's not how it works. It, in the rest of the world, we all understood that when you ship something from one country to the other, sometimes it's not even worth it. I mean, in Argentina, if you buy something from abroad, even if it's much cheaper, when it goes through the customs, it's 50% more that you have to pay. You, know, you have to pay for that, and it just destroys the economy in terms of you know, crossing borders. You don't do that anymore. And that's something that obviously so many people took for granted, and only now they're understanding, oh, now what? And I'll give you an actual live example. That little cup of tea, it was actually a store that sold you know, hand-painted uh, mugs from UK. Some very nice ones, right? 25 pounds, give or take, plus a, a few bucks of shipping. Well, that was before. Now, going through customs and the added cost of shipping and whatnot, 50 bucks. You're just pricing yourself out of the market. No one buys from you anymore because it has to go through customs. Since you're no longer within that if economic group, it just has to be that way. You cannot keep on having the benefits of being part of the club, as it was said at some point, and having none of the responsibilities, just, just childish and unrealistic. But what many didn't quite understand is how some of the richest, most powerful people in the country, the elite, the monarchy as well, and the elite that is mixed with the monarchy and all part of this, you know, powerful, extremely rich elite. All of they, all they could see was now we have the freedom to do what we want to do, the things that we used to not be able to do because we had to follow certain lines, we had to follow certain regulations. The pesticide that you know the evil EU thinks is just too uh, bad for human beings. Well, now we can use that, and we. Have have to answer to no one. I mean, you cannot sell that stuff to the rest of the of the EU anymore, even if you want to pay those added prices, but it just doesn't follow those regulations. That is just not allowed to use that specific pesticide or to use that chemical or, or whatever material in a manufacturing process. The idea that you can now just dump a sewer into your own beaches. Our historic coastlines with shit and piss. Our new found and flood our historic coastlines with shit and piss. Our this is maybe the greatest example. This is the perfect example of now we have the freedom to do whatever it is we want. So instead of treating, you know, serve water, sewer, straight from people's toilet the way you're supposed to do as a company that has agreed, committed to treat waters before dumping them into the ocean. No, you don't do that anymore. Why? Because it's cheaper to not do your job and still get paid. It is cheaper to not spend the money in chemicals, in, in processing, in treating those waters. Right, you make what? 
a, a, a couple extra b million of pounds uh, per week or so? Why not? I I'm not even going to bathe in those beaches. I'll go to the nice ones. I mean, like <laughs> like Boris Johnson does. He goes to Greece for his holidays, right? He doesn't go to these beaches. These beaches are for the poor that cannot afford a, a, a plane ticket to nicer places, right? But you are stuck with your own beaches being polluted by your own greedy elite. And the excuse, I mean, it, this is laughable. Anyone that spent two minutes in, in, in UK knows that using the excuse of, oh, it's been raining too much, it rains all the damn time. So if it rains too much, it, it overflows the pipes and you're allowed to just dump everything. You know what? If you were still part of, of the European Union, you would get fined for this. You would have to pay probably millions of pounds for each time you just dump you know, fecal matter and sewer into, into your own coast, even if it's your own country, because you're still within those regulations. So even if you do it to your own country, you have to pay a very significant fine for that. Now you don't have to pay any fine, you do whatever it is you want. Not whatever you want, whatever they want, the people that benefit the most from all of this. Guys, this is part of waking up to the reality of social engineering how people are manipulated it is true that it's you know it's a combination of things it is part of the elite within the united, the, the united kingdom it is part also of the elite in other parts uh, the united states certainly benefit from a weaker european union of course the negotiating power that I was talking before if you're smaller even just by a small percentage you're still smaller than you were before you have less critical mass than you had before. You have a better negotiating position with someone that just lost an important member. If you are China, same deal. Weaker European Union, of course, it benefits us as well. What about Russia? Well, a lot of Russian money was going directly into the Brexit campaign because Russia, it's not only economically, they were looking at strategic advantage of having a conflicting European Union neighbor, something that was seen to be falling apart, and look how bad they are. Anything that weakened the European Union benefit, of course, Russia as well. So it was a, a matter of uh, making a decision that probably did not benefit the, the people that, at the end of the day, had the final decision. Folks, see you on our next video. Take care.